Hi guys, welcome to this morning's update video. I trust and hope you're doing amazing. So we are going to be talking about what is taking place across the Atlantic Basin. There is a disturbance now designated as Invest 97L, which may develop as we head into this new week. And it's not going to be a problem for anyone, at least not for the short term. And then another tropical wave is going to be emerging from Africa. We now have more ensemble members with our GFS and Euro models anticipating that something may develop on approach to the Caribbean later this month. Well, as, we could, as we're going to be heading into next week. So we'll be looking at that as well. And let's go into the details. Okay, so here we are seeing that cluster of disorganized uh, activity associated with the disturbance. And over the coming days, we could see some development take place off the system. And as I mentioned, it's not going to be much of a bother for anyone. And that little blob up there is an association with what is left of Jerry. So the main system itself has actually dissipated, and that's just the remnants of it moving out. And in addition to that, as we head to the Caribbean, there's a lot of moisture around. So many places today are likely to experience some very heavy rainfall, which may trigger flooding, especially in the more vulnerable areas. So as we zoom in here to the Caribbean, we can see uh, all of this disorganized shower and thunderstorm activity. Earlier this, uh, this morning, some of that affected eastern parishes of Jamaica. For example, we see thunderstorms offshore the Dominican Republic. So this general area is likely to remain active today. And as I speak, let's look at that rainfall forecast. Here we go. Some more color on this graphic indicates more rainfall activity. Within the vicinity of the Bahamas, there could be rainfall amounts up to two inches or so today, probably a bit higher in a couple spots. Likewise, for much of Cuba, there could be some heavy rain and thunderstorms within the vicinity of the Cayman Islands as well and Jamaica additional heavy rain and thunderstorms will likely occur. And as we also look to the vicinity of Central America, we can see some colorful shadings there, especially going to parts of Nicaragua, Honduras, uh, Costa Rica as well. So very colorful there, likely some heavy rain expected. And as we head to the vicinity of the Guyanas, it's likely be, uh, to be on the quieter side, especially for Suriname and French Guiana, maybe a couple isolated showers in parts of Northern Guyana. And for the ABC Islands, there could be some rainfall today. Fingers crossed that there will be. I know that it's been very dry in the area. Lesser Antilles, scattered showers and thunderstorms likewise for the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico and even the Turks and Caicos Islands as well. Couples Paz and Hispaniola may also get some additional periods of heavy rain, but it may not be anything too crazy. But if it is the case where you do encounter some heavy rainfall today, especially the flooding rains, please stay safe and do not take any unnecessary risks. Now, talking more about this disturbance here, 97L, we can see that the formation chance has increased since yesterday now at 50%. So it's going to be moving to the west-northwest and eventually up to the northwest and making a curve up and out. Why is it curving? Well, we do not have a dominant area of high pressure. With a lot of these uh, frontal systems moving out of the U.S. and into the uh, Atlantic, what they help to do is weaken the subtropical area of high pressure or displace it further to the east. And tropical systems have a natural tendency to want to go north. So the moment they get the opportunity with the weakening in that high pressure system, they're going to take it. So that's what's going to be happening with this system here. But it may reinforce for another tropical wave that will be coming off of Africa to move generally to the west. We've been seeing that trend down the road. There is no guarantees with regards to the uh, track at that time or how soon it may potentially make a curve. And uh, we'll talk about that. We'll go on to the ensemble members momentarily. But as we look at the model intensity guidance here for 97L, we can see that most of our models are not expecting any short-term development of the system. So maybe as we head through this week, going to the latter part of the week, we may see it attempt to become a tropical depression or even a named storm. So we see that by around uh, 
96 going to 120 hours out that is when most of our models within the next four to five days show that it may acquire tropical storm status we see them in that green highlight so we'll see what happens with the system the good news it's not a bother for anyone as we take a look at the ensemble members now so starting out with the euro here we can see all of these tracks that's for the current disturbance 97l and then this goes out to monday the 20th so that's next monday take a look at this we see more members let's compare this to yesterday yesterday we did not have as many members anticipating that we could see an area of low pressure form and head west but we're seeing that now so we're having a bit of increase in confidence about this next system and even as you look at the gfs we're also seeing maybe a bit more members here uh anticipating that we may see development likewise so We'll see what eventually happens, guys. Again, the next name on the list for the hurricane season, well, the next two names are Lorenzo and Melissa. So we'll see if 97L will surely uh, make a run for becoming Lorenzo, and we'll see if this next tropical wave will attempt to develop and potentially be the next system of the hurricane season. In terms of the dry air out there though, let's look at that real quick. So we can see this graphic showing these different colorful shadings. These shadings of yellows, oranges, and reds, they indicate the dry air. So ahead of 97L, there is some dry air out there. And uh, we'll see if that will clear up for the next tropical wave because this has been a huge inhibiting factor this hurricane season. So we'll see what will happen in the next uh, couple of days. And also with the frontal systems moving out of the U.S., they also bring down dry, stable air. That's why we see all that in the Gulf and offshore of the southeastern coast. And we're going to be seeing a lot of this uh, as time goes by as we head into later this year. And as it relates to something else, the sea surface temperatures, let's look at that here. So it is very warm. The water temperatures are very, very warm in and around the Caribbean. We haven't had any system this year that's come in and really taken advantage of these very warm waters. So in the case of other environmental conditions, such as those upper level winds being uh, conducive and not much dry air intrusion, if something actually moves through, then there would be room for rapid intensification because, I mean, 30 degrees, 31 in a couple spots, very, very, very warm waters are out there, guys. But fortunately, the Caribbean has been spared for the most part this hurricane season, but it's not over until it's over. We want to keep watch for that next tropical wave that will be emerging, and my channel will be keeping you posted as necessary. And that is what I wanted to bring to your attention in this video, and I do hope you found it to be informative. But if you have any questions, you can feel free to drop them in the comments below. I will get to you when I can. And remember to always be weatherwise.